Test, test, test. One, two, three. What's going on, team? It's Ricky with TechBud Solutions. Hope that you guys are all having an amazing Sunday. Uh, sorry for the late Sunday stock talk. Uh, for those that are tuning in for the first time, my name is Ricky. Welcome to the channel. Uh, one of the things that we do on a weekly basis is I pretty much go live at 6.30. It's 6.44, so I do apologize for the delay. But at 6.30 p.m. every single Sunday, Mountain Standard Time. And this is when I simply break down the top stocks that you see value in. So pretty much if you ever just want to share a stock that you are interested in and then you want to share simply why you're interested in it, I can break it down for you and then I give my own opinion. <clears throat> One of the things that I want you guys to know is that, of course, uh, you should never trade based off of anyone else's opinion. Uh, this is just where we can share ideas amongst one another uh, and have a good time, right? I think when we come together as a team, especially before the market opens Monday through Friday, we come we come together the day before and we talk about you know uh, the top stocks that we all see value. So one of the things that I wanted to ask you, and I want to get some input. So first of all, uh, what's up? How's everyone doing today? Uh, hope and wish that you guys are all having a pretty solid weekend. Uh, there is no question that because of the news of the attack in uh, Iran, right, if I'm not mistaken, um, there's, there's a lot of, th there's just a lot of talk about like uh, war, right? And we could see, you know, oil prices shoot up, we saw gold shoot up. Uh, and what I wanted, people just continue to joke around about World War Three, right? Um, I don't want to joke around about it. Um, I want to ask you guys what you think and if you think it would be effective and or efficient um, to share certain stocks that might have a positive catalyst if we do continue to move forward with steps of potential war, right? Um, we have a lot of people talking about it. We have a lot of people sharing different ideas. We have a lot of people sharing specific stocks uh, that will tend to do well if we do uh, move forward with that, right? So with that being said, wanted to get your guys' input. I was thinking about maybe making a video uh, tomorrow or the next day that follows about the top stocks uh, to watch if something were, uh, if things were to go south, right? Uh, let me know what you guys think and if you guys have any stock that you are watching that either gets positively or negatively influenced uh, by war, then uh, feel free to share it with me within the Discord chat and we can go with that. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I uh, would love to break it down. Any stock that you guys see value in, all I ask you is to uh, post things in the ticker callout format. So as long as we can do that, we have Ismail tuning in uh, for all those that are going to be asking uh, you know, to post things in the ticker call-out format. So uh, that's that's really all I'm going to be asking for. If you guys can do that, and of course, if you feel like I earned your thumbs up, uh, then that would be greatly appreciated. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, start breaking down your guys' top stocks. So, uh, all right, here we go. So this is ticker symbol GD. So we'll start off with this one. So we got GD right here. Um, again, I have a big focus on direction. I have a big focus on there being a consistent uh, pattern. Uh, I don't really see that going on right now. Uh, I can see why you're watching this, but one of the things that we could see going on right here is the RSI and the MACD are already overbought. Obviously, they're just indicators that we use as a reference. But one of the things that we have seen is that it has been selling off. It did have a nice push. It is still holding above the EMA line, but it also looks like it's coming down from it being uh, or hitting highs of around 184. So it looks like it pushed up, became overbought, began to pull back, and it wouldn't be much of a surprise if it c continues to descend. So again, just watch out if it continues to hold above the EMA line and make higher highs, then great, so be it, right? But right now we're at a point where it, it would make sense if it does begin to pull back and these indicators are in a sense then indicating just that. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, breakdown. So uh, my goal is sharing in case things do go south here. There's a less uh, defense stock. Wow. I appreciate that, Michael. Thank you for taking time out of your day to put that together. Uh, what's going on, guys? Uh, I see a lot of you guys saying hello. I appreciate you guys tuning in. So um, let's see. Let's see. We got ticker symbol UNH. So UNH. Here it goes. Uh, for sure. Okay. So one of the things that we um, are seeing now is that we have a pretty consistent pattern of UNH 
showing signs of higher highs and continuously pushing up. It wasn't doing that before. Uh, again, the SMA line is a great indicator for that. It looks like right now it has been pulling back. The RSI is a little bit more on the oversold side. The MACD looks like it's definitely like waiting for a reversal again it does have some margin to give back so patience is definitely key on this uh, but i would see that if you like to focus on consistency then um, obviously the direction is in your favor overall direction that we have seen within the past two and a half months would definitely be in your favor so i would just set my alert i would follow up with this i watch out with the earnings that it does have on the 15th of january uh, but i'm going to set my alert so once it does break above the ema line then at least you have the direction back in your favor and it's no longer selling off so i've made multiple mistakes before where again you try to buy it at the lowest price point but then it just continues to sell off so it's all about being an effective and efficient trader so in my opinion uh, confirmation is key, right? And if you're so certain that it's going to push up, then why not set your alert and then just wait for it, wait for that direction to be in your favor. And if it does push up, then looking at previous highs, you can then determine, hey, and revisit it. Is it something that I would want to take a position on? Is the margin of profit still worth it? Is a pattern there? Is the direction there? And if so, and it meets everything that is supposed to meet for your criteria, uh, then so be it. And then that's when you can decide to enter and exit. So uh, here we go. So we got I N T C I N T C. Alrighty. I like this. Uh, you guys are focusing, uh, at least the ones I've broken down so far. Uh, there's, there's a direction, there's a pattern. And I like that. I, I really wanted to stray away from any pump and dumps or anything like that. Right. I like how you guys have either quality companies or quality patterns or yeah, stuff like that. So overall SMA line, Definitely, I like this. One of the things that I do want to point out is although it is pushing up, and again, this is 100% my opinion, uh, I find it to be pretty far away from the SMA line. And one of the things that we've seen, and correct me if you think I'm right or wrong with this, but it looks like it, it will just made new highs at 60, pretty much 61, right? Uh, and since it's hit that price point, it hasn't made higher highs. So it's kind of just consolidating up here, but it almost looks like it could formulate this like reversal, right? Where it could begin to sell off and give back, you know, uh, back to the SMA line as it's done multiple times before. So when it becomes a little bit more overbought, it tends to correct itself and pull back. And this is kind of what I'm seeing here. It looks a little bit more overbought where it wouldn't be much of a surprise if it does begin to pull back. So I'm going to set my alert here to if it does begin to sell off, then I think it's great, right? You can really challenge yourself and you can really test yourself to see, again, you seek opportunity and then you wait for it to present itself. So right now we're going to see if this thing actually begins to push up. But if it begins to sell off, then I think that's the beautiful part about trading is that, you know, you wait for an opportunity to present itself. And if it doesn't and things begin to go south, well, that's the great part of being disciplined, right? That you didn't take a position because you were waiting to see the confirmation or wait for the confirmation. So uh, patience is definitely uh, key in this. Uh, so I uh, wanted to ask you how I can get into day trading because I don't know. Um, okay, so I'll answer that question at the very end, um, and we can we can go from there. So uh, O N T X. So O N T X. But I appreciate you tuning in so early. So uh, happy to hear that you're so eager to get started. Right. Uh, one of the things that I do want to point out about this, and again, you guys know that I'm super biased about lower cap penny stocks. First of all, it's trading at forty eight cents. Overall direction is obviously not in your favor. Also, volume before and then all of a sudden volume now. Do you guys see these volume bars, right? The volume bars that obviously there's like either some form of manipulation, there's some form of marketing that's driving demand. I can see why, you know, you're probably asking about this. They had a 16% day on Friday, which again, I'm not here to tell you what to trade, what not to trade. I'm just saying for a lot of beginner traders, this thing, uh, lower cap stocks, penny stocks, can move very quickly. And if you're someone that doesn't understand how to manage risk, if you're someone that doesn't understand where to buy, where to sell and stuff like that, having a plan, having structure, uh, you need to learn how to walk before you run. And in my opinion, uh, I would stray away from lower cap stocks, especially when there's obvious forms of manipulation. So that's just my two cents. And again, I am 100% biased that I, I just don't like to empower a lot of our newer traders to focus on that. Uh, I'm not here to say that it's bad. I'm just here to say, to make you guys aware of the risk involved. Obviously, you can make money doing anything. Uh, high risk, high reward, right? 
Um, so it kind of just depends on your approach. So let's go ahead and break down AMD. I appreciate the call out. Uh, AMD hitting highs of 49.79. So we can see overall direction is definitely in your favor. In my honest opinion right now, RSI, MACD definitely due for a pullback as we've seen it pull back multiple times before. It just made new highs. It wouldn't be much of a surprise if it does begin to pull back. I would be kind of patient on this one. It's not really like you're missing out on anything. The direction is in your favor, but now we want to focus on, again, not just, in my opinion, right? I don't like to focus on just getting in when things are going up. I still want to focus on getting something for a good deal. So uh, there's a very consistent pattern with AMD where we can see that it pushes up, it pulls back, it begins to find the support, and then it begins to pick right back up again. So again, seek opportunity, wait for that confirmation, and then know when to enter and to exit. Um, at least that's that's the way that I like to approach it. So uh, Anthony, if you can do me the biggest favor, just because I want you to, first of all, you don't have to donate. Um, all I ask you is if you want me to break something down is uh, post it in the ticker call out format. Uh, by doing that, I'll break down your UCO stock. Um, so here we go. So LMT. <clears throat> Here it goes. So LMT overall direction was in your favor. One of the things that I want to point out about this is that it had a very consistent uptrend and then things began to really consolidate. So it no longer was making higher highs until recently. It had a what 3% day on Friday. It pushed up to highs of 417. I can see why. Again, this is something that um Lockheed Martin. So what is this? Let me see. Okay, so this has to do with uh, it being a defense company. So I can definitely see why this, so this would be something that we would watch uh, as we continue to talk about Iran and, and the attack and war, right? Uh, so I'm glad, right? One of the things that I wanna point out, and again, um, I just like making people aware, um, right now there is relevance behind war. There is relevance behind these defense companies. Therefore, there's gonna be more demand for these defense companies companies itself makes sense right the relevance doesn't necessarily last forever if things begin to die out if obviously the tension just begins to uh, no longer be there then understand that what goes up most likely will come back down right so please understand how things work don't think that it has to continue to push up be smart be effective be efficient and there's nothing wrong with watching these stocks. I just want to make sure that we don't go in hoping that it continues to go up when obviously right now it's super relevant and then all of a sudden things begin to, you know, the tension is no longer there and then it corrects itself, right? Because the demand is no longer there. So again, just, just be effective and efficient with your trades. And again, it's about being a structured trader, right? And not just a hopeful trader. So uh, really happy that you pointed this one out. It's probably one of my favorite ones that has been pointed out due to the relevance, not because I see it to be a great opportunity at all, but it's because it makes sense why we're talking about it. So I like that. Uh, just set my two alerts and then we can follow up with it. So I just broke down six stocks. Let's do about, um, what's it called? About two more and then we can go from there. So there's quite a bit of you sharing it in the ticker call format. We might have to do a little bit more because I know there's a lot of you um, asking for me to break something down. So I do uh, I do appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to tune on in. So QRVO. So QRVO, here it goes. Um, okay, overall direction is in our favor. Uh, we can see that it's been pushing up, making higher highs. Uh, quick little heads up, it is selling off as right now. So the direction at currently not in our favor. We have to find a support first, and then if it does begin to push up, then obviously we can see why, right? So kind of like what we did here when it sold off, it broke above the EMA line and then continue to see higher highs. That's kind of like what I would like to wait for. So again, the more patient that you are, the more it could potentially sell off and the more margin you might build it for yourself for a potential reversal. So patience pays definitely in this market. So here it goes. All right, let's do it. Let's move on to the next one. So we got ticker symbol ITA. Here it goes. Okay, so. All righty, so this also has to do with So this is a defense ETF. I'll have to look into it uh, by BlackRock. Okay, uh, BlackRock, right, uh, multi-billion dollar 
a cash management company. I think they're valued at what they have like in cash management. They have like seven, seven trillion dollars, something like that. Something crazy. I don't know. So wait, seven billion or seven? Trillion? I'm not too sure. No, seven. It has to be seven trillion. Um, but one of the things that we got going on right now is obviously uh, there's a pretty consistent pattern. It does a really good job holding above the overall SMA line. Uh, we have nice push up. I think it has to do with the relevance behind the war. Obviously, if this is a defense ETF, uh, looking at the MACD, looking at the RSI, it is overbought. But again, if this hype continues, then we can see this easily continue to move up. So this is something that, again, I like. I appreciate you guys calling it out, but I think it's very early, right? We have to follow up with it, see if this is something that we're going to continue talking about. And if so, then again, um, things might continue to move from there. So all right, sounds good. Ticker symbol WW. I appreciate that, Sam. Thank you again for tuning on in. There it goes. So, all righty. Uh, overall, very consistent uptrend. Uh, one of the things that we are seeing right now, it has done it before where it breaks below the SMA line, but normally when we do break below the SMA line, this could mean that there could be a change of direction. So it doesn't mean that it has to continue to pick back up. Uh, it can continue to get rejected here if things continue to go south. So I'm gonna set my alert here. And I'm going to set my alert here. So right now the direction is definitely not in our favors. It looks like it's trying to um, find a support right around 35. So we're sitting right around 36, 34. We did a lot of consolidation. We're right back at the EMA line. But again, one of the things that we are seeing is that it continues to make these lower highs and these lower lows. So it's almost doing this downward staircase pattern. And again, if the direction is not in your favor or if the direction is unclear, you probably will feel less comfortable taking a more aggressive position. It makes sense, right? So what can we do? We can stay patient, wait for confirmation and seek that opportunity and, and try to see if we can begin to make more sense of the trade. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and break down two more and then we can go from there. So DVAX, what's going on, Andrew? So DV, oh, DVAX. Ooh -wee. All right, I like this one. Uh, overall, the direction was definitely not in our favorite back here, uh, but it looks like ever since it did break above the SMA line, it's been doing a pretty good job holding above the SMA line. It does, again, patterns tend to repeat themselves. They don't have to. I like the MACD. I like the RSI. I like that it pulled back. I know a lot of you guys might agree with me on this. Um, I really like when things begin to consolidate around the SMA line. Uh, it tends to be, tends, right, uh, to be a pretty uh, solid support. This is a little bit of a lower cap stock, so this is something that you have to be aware of, but we are getting some consolidation around this general area. We're not pushing up, we're not making higher highs. We had a green day on Friday, which is great, but again, that doesn't mean that it can't continue to sell off. So again, patterns tend to repeat themselves, they don't have to. So this is really where you're gonna have to challenge yourself, wait for that confirmation, wait to see if that direction is in your favor. And then again, looking at previous highs, looking at where we might get confirmation, right? So, oh my God, come on, TOS, work. Dude, <laughs> it's not wanting to work for me. Let's see, there it goes. So one of the things, if we do wait for confirmation after $6, from $6 to about $7, it offers about 16%. Again, it doesn't have to fulfill that entire gap, uh, but that's just the potential margin of profit if it does recover, right? So now we have to challenge ourselves, wait to see if we wait, conf uh, see confirmation, and then we can follow up with it. So I'm gonna set a series of alerts. I like it, but we're at a critical point right now where it could go either way. So this is where we have to try to stay patient. Um, all right, let's go ahead and... So, Ricky, not everyone can trade higher stocks like you. Your account is way bigger than most of us. Lower cap stocks like two to seven. It's more reasonable, you know. You know this. Uh, that's indifferent. Um, even if you have a hundred dollars right in your account, and there's a stock that is worth fifty dollars, it doesn't necessarily matter about the if I can buy a thousand shares or if I can buy two shares. It matters about you know the opportunity. If there's a five percent margin of profit. It doesn't matter if you can just buy one of those stocks, right? Even if you could just buy one, it's still 5% in comparison to even if it's $1 or if it's $100 per share. It's about percentage growth. It's about the opportunity. So um, again, I'm simply breaking down stocks that our members are requesting for me to <laughs> do. So 
Uh, if you don't like it, uh, feel free to share a stock that you would like me to break down, and I would, of course, love to break it down for you. So I appreciate it. I didn't mean to offend you by breaking down stocks that were a little bit more expensive. Not not my focus. We don't benefit from that, right? Uh, overall, definitely showing signs of an uptrend. Uh, it looks like it just hit new highs. Definitely looks a little bit more on the overbought side. Can it continue to uptrend? Uh, of course. Can it continue to push up? Of course. I just think that it had to do more of the, uh, because of the dividends, right? So therefore, it's more relevant. You can see it's volume picked up, uh, definitely pushed up. I would really be careful with this one. And it just looks a little bit more on the overbought side. And it would make sense on why it could pull back. Can it continue to uptrend? And can you continue to go with the flow? Of course. But again, it wouldn't be uh, much of a surprise if it does begin to pull back. So... Uh, what program are you using? Can you do a tutorial for beginners? So Anthony, uh, I am using TD Ameritrade by, or Thinkorswim by TD Ameritrade. And I have, I think I have the top video on YouTube for Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim is again, the platform that I use. And um, it's not the one that you have to use. There's, you know, Charles Schwab, there's Fidelity, there's so many different platforms out there. Interactive brokers for those that are outside of the US, um, crazy amount of different platforms out there. I don't know what you're looking for. So I would kind of, you know, take time, learn about the different platforms out there and see uh, which one's a good fit for you. Um, here it goes, uh, GSY. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know about this volume. Yeah, volume's way too low, so I, I wouldn't touch this. But uh, looks like there's a pretty consistent pattern. Kind of just consolidates. Uh, not something that I would touch. Not something that would meet my criteria. So um, yeah, you saw. Yep, yep. Alrighty. So, in your opinion, is forex trading or stock trading market more profitable? <laughs> it's. I mean, it's, they're different markets, right? And it comes down to, you know, you could either make money in both or you could lose money in both. It's, it, I don't trade in the Forex market. So I have no opinion about what I don't do. People ask me about Forex. People ask me about options. People ask me about Bitcoin. I don't trade those. My focus is trading in the stock market. That's what I talk about. And that's what I have an opinion on, opinion on because that's what I do. Um, I have no opinion on anything else. I think if you're interested in it, then you should dedicate more time to inform yourself more about it, more about the you know, potential and opportunity that it has to offer, as well as the risk involved. I think that's a great way to begin to inform yourself. Uh, I wanna break down one more stock and then I'll, uh, what's it called? I'll break down uh, or I'll answer some open-ended questions, so. Here it goes. Uh, I don't like, uh, actually, I know which ones I'm gonna break down. So I don't like this one. Uh, it looks like a pump and dump. Uh, you can see with no volume, all of a sudden it looks like it gets pumped pretty often. I would completely stay away from this. Uh, I talked about this one on Friday or Thursday, 100% uh, a pump and dump, no question about it. Uh, it's being pumped on stock twits, on Twitter, on all these infamous platforms just to, uh, again, I know you can make money off of anything. There's no question. I mean, it definitely pushed up for quite a while. There's news behind it. All I it's what I view it as. Uh, what I view it as is marketing. Uh, same thing with what is it? It's like Sava or yeah, same thing. Another pump and dump. Um, I'm not here to say you can't make money with these pump and dumps. I'm just saying that it comes at a great form of risk. Again. If you're just getting started and you're uninformed and you're getting into this and you don't understand where to buy, where to sell, how to manage your risk, then I just think you're really setting yourself up for failure. Easiest way for me to put it. You need to learn how to walk before you could run. Can you make money doing this? Of course, you can make money doing anything. You can buy and resell potato chips and you can make money, but doesn't mean that you're gonna open a potato chip store by not knowing anything about potato chips. It just doesn't make sense, right? And that's a really bad example, but you guys get what I mean. You guys know that I'm always here to try to remind you uh, to take a little bit, take a step back and inform yourself and look at the big picture. When other people are suggesting for you what, what and where you should trade, that's where a red flag would come up and be like, yo, first of all, you're not supposed to even be telling people what to trade, right? Uh, second of all is, you know, if you're not informed about the risk involved, then I think you're going in kind of blind. So I just, again, 
there's a lot there's just no question I, I do believe that people can make money um, trading these either pump and dumps or uh, these momentum stocks right because they just catch a lot of traction that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is I think it's overall probably in your best interest just to dedicate a little bit more time to inform yourself right um, but yeah all right so so why do you try I'm gonna answer a couple open-ended questions I'll answer about uh, two I'll start with this one and then I'll answer the question that I got earlier today um, or earlier in this video so th this one was why do you trade and uh, not invest so I do invest but I don't invest in the stock market I invest in real estate so uh, since I'm 25 now but um, since age 20 uh, I bought my first house right and one of the things that I wanted to learn a little bit more about is again investing in real estate so since then I've invested in 12 properties um, it's not the best way to do it it's I'm not here to empower you to say that it's the only way to invest it's just that's my focus I do what I do because it's what I see value in so why don't I invest in crypto it's just that's not where my focus is I'm not here to talk bad about any market it's I, I'm just why do I trade natural gas and you gas and degas so often because that's my focus and it works well for me as you guys see every day um, I ignore what everyone else is doing I focus solely on myself and and what works well for me and I do well for myself and that is all I need so my focus my empowerment for each and every single one of you is not to trade what I trade not to trade what other people are trading but trade something that makes sense to you and that you understand. With that, either you will make money or if you make mistakes, you will learn from it, right? But it's because you have that understanding aspect that I think when you're just getting started, you really don't. So, um, and I wanna answer the other question. Uh, we got a question earlier in this video <clears throat> talking a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> so RF is saying, in other words, uh, use your brain folks uh, no but uh, the other question that we got is from someone that is just getting started uh, one of the things that um, what what would I encourage for someone that is just getting started I think this is something that maybe a lot of you guys can relate to some of you guys are in the very early stages of still learning how to trade um, I think this is that's great um, I made a video a couple days ago and some people really resonated well with it other people did not. Um, you can learn everything online, right? You can learn everything off of YouTube. Uh, I have a video explaining exactly how I learned. I learned off of YouTube videos and I learned off of Googling every question that I had. Uh, I would call my broker, uh, right? I used to use Fidelity and I would try to figure it all out. Uh, my biggest thing is I'm a big believer in trial and error. Uh, I dedicated a lot, of, a lot of time to practice. I made pretty much every mistake in the book um, but I never gave up why because I had a big passion for it and it wasn't it started off that I got interested in the stock market because of the money right as I'm sure each and every single one of you but one of the things that I really began to pick up on is I really began to enjoy it and I had a job that paid well I was doing well in other areas but I always went back to the stock market because I genuinely just really really enjoyed it so um, my biggest encouragement for each and every single one of you is if you guys are really trying to like make it or break it this year, um, I just don't normally see that work very well for people. And I'm just speaking from experience and that is 100% my opinion. Uh, but I think that if you're really trying to progress in life, it's not so much about make it or break it, but maybe 2020, uh, instead of it being your year, maybe it could just be a year where you begin to inform yourself you begin to inform yourself more about you know other areas in life or other markets that you are really interested in drop shipping you know maybe how to get started it's just about inform yourself um, you know day trading if, if that's something that you find of value or of interest uh, anything that you are intrigued of, uh, intrigued by then how about 2020 is not the make it or break it year but it's just the year that you dedicate uh, to progress and learn a little bit more about, you know, whatever it is that you want to pursue. I think that that is a great way to start 2020. And as you begin to inform yourself, I think that we can all agree that you will then have and be able to make a better decision about 
what you want to invest your time into and maybe what you don't want to invest your time into because you're more informed about what goes into it. So uh, I know that's a very open-ended answer, uh, but I think a lot of the people that uh, are just getting started uh, are just, yeah, you, I, yeah. I, I don't know how to put it into uh, words, but all I can say is um, I think 2020 should be the, the year that we focus on just progress, uh, progress and informing yourself and again, surrounding yourself with people that empower you and, up, and uplift you. So let's see. Uh, so Ricky, do you still live stream during market open? Yeah, I trade live for the Learn Plan Profit Group every morning. So it's just, I just work with them. Uh, they're the ones that, you know, see Val and what it is that we do. So I trade, trade live with them every morning. So um, let's see. So do you trade options? I do not. I just don't. So why don't I buy and resell potato chips? I just, I don't. It's just not my focus. So, so uh, what do you buy a cannabis stock? Uh, Robert, uh, not my biggest focus, but I, I've seen a lot of people can that, that, that have done very well by just focusing on cannabis. So I'm a big believer that if you find your niche and it's something that works well for you, I would run with it. I, I don't care about what other people are saying. If you find a niche and it works well for you, then I say pursue it. So um, I like that, Mike. So let's see. So what leverage do you use? I don't. Um, I do have a margin account, uh, but my account sits at a little bit over $40,000. Um, I only trade with what's in my account. Uh, first of all, I trade leverage based ETFs uh, and ETNs. So uh, there's, and a lot of them are triple leverage, therefore they don't even give you, even if you wanted much leverage, they wouldn't even give you that. Um, I, I am a big believer that you should not use money that is not yours. So. Uh, if you don't have it in your account, then uh, I wouldn't leverage it, especially if you're someone that's just getting started. So, uh, but again, that is 100% my opinion. All right, let's see. Leverage is playing with fire. Um, yeah, and, and of course, uh, that's our opinion and stuff like that. So, so uh, have you ever been disappointed in trading and though and thought, thought about giving up? Uh, since you're losing, of course, um, I think that we can all agree, and I say this all the time, is that nothing worth having comes easy. I think that comes with relationships. I think that comes with friendships, with work, with professions. Um, I just always got, went back to it. I I would try different things in, in different areas, but I was just always so intrigued about trading in the stock market, and that's why I always went back to it. it uh, fortunately, um, when it comes down to trading the stock market, you can make a, a, a decent living, right? It's not too bad. Um, but even then, even if I didn't make as much as I do trading in the stock market, I still believe I enjoy it so much that I would, I would still do it. So, um, how has your social life changed before and after you started trading the stocks? Um, I, I'm a little bit different, right? Because I'm not just a stock trader, right? Um, I invest in a couple different markets and obviously uh, on the social side, uh, we have a little bit of a following. So um, I only trade for about two to three hours every morning. I am someone, and I think a lot of you guys might be like me, that I like to be productive. I like to th do things throughout the day and I like to do things with my time. So that is why I felt so blessed that, hey, you know, I hit my daily goal uh, and I tend to hit my daily goal within two to three hours of the market open. So I'm usually done trading by 10 a.m. Uh, can I sit back, watch TV for the rest of the day? Of course, but we have businesses, we have investment properties, we have partners, I have a team um, and I like to make use of my time. I'm, I'm in such a blessed position that everything that I do now is I'm just working towards building um, a stable foundation for my future family. That's that's my focus, right? And, and building it with my team for their future family as well. That's 
that's what I, you know, what motivates me, what empowers me, and something that I'm working towards every single day. So uh, I appreciate you asking that. But uh, yeah. Uh, who is your mentor you follow uh, on the stock market? I didn't have a mentor. Uh, my dad was a general contractor, so he laid down tile. Um, there's no one in my family that traded in the stock market. It, it wasn't about that. It's I was self-educated by just like what each and every single one of you guys can do. Um, it's all about surrounding yourself with people that empower you, uplift you, and always eager to learn more. And, uh, thank you very much for the new trader. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Uh, you didn't have to donate, but I appreciate it. Hope and wish you a, a solid start to the week, right? Um, here it goes. So is 30 minutes enough for trading? So I'll, I'll end it with this. Um, I'll end it with that. So uh, people always ask, first of all, about uh, how long is it okay for you to trade? right? Um, I'm a big believer in being effective and efficient. And this is very difficult. I think a lot of you guys can also agree with me on this, that how many of you, and, and be honest with me, when you first came across my YouTube channel, how many of you guys got super excited, binge watched a bunch of my videos, probably fell asleep to my videos? Um, you know, how many of you guys were just obsessed about learning more? There's that there's that excitement. I think we all do that, right? When you're first introduced into something that you find so intriguing, um, you just, you're hungry for more. And I know it's difficult to provide structure or to have structure when there's so much freedom. And this is, I think, the biggest mistake that entrepreneurs and investors and traders make is that when you're within a job, uh, you're there for a selected amount of time or a limited amount of time. You have a set list of responsibilities, criteria, and rules that you must abide with uh, or abide by. Uh, and if you don't, there's consequences. Uh, so with that being said, uh, being an entrepreneur, being an investor, being a, being your own boss, uh, it's not like that. And I think this is where a lot of people go wrong because when there's that lack of structure, there's that lack of discipline and that lack of accountability. Um, so what I would encourage you and empower you to do is you never want to get rid of that excitement, right? And how many of you, be honest with me, how many of you from when you first started trading um, maybe are not as excited anymore? Why? You guys were first so excited to learn right, to learn more about this market, right? But then you guys became so obsessed about chasing the dollar. Am I am I close to any of you, right? Am I kind of like, th th is this making sense? Uh, I think this is something that we all follow. When things become so much more of like a job and we feel it to be more of like a requirement, and I think a lot of us might experience this in relationships where it becomes something that we feel like we have to do and not something that we want to do anymore, that's when you begin to grow apart. So I think to have a healthy relationship with the stock market is when you structure and limit yourself to when you trade. So when you do trade, it is viewed as an opportunity and more of a privilege rather than something that you have to do. Trust me, I know that it sucks Think about it. For the past two to three years, people think that it's so easy. I'm, I'm not here to complain or anything like that, but I literally have to wake up every single morning and I enjoy it, right? And it's my passion, but I wake up every single mon uh, morning. I trade live with the Learn Plan Profit Group and it's something that I held myself accountable to do and it's something that I do every single day. It's There's no excuses. Um, it's something that you just have to get. and and. Over time, it, it becomes a job. You begin to, oh, I don't want to wake up in the morning. I went out last night. You know, I, I don't want to, you know, all this, all this like back and forth. It's just, it, it, but if you limit yourself and you keep that exciting, uh, then I think then that, uh, that is when you can really uh, begin to flourish. I think that when you keep things exciting and you work with people that empower you and uplift you and you have that again, 
hunger from when you first started, that's when that creativity kicks in, right? And that's when you begin to really um, progress. And I think that that should be our focus for 2020. I'm absolutely no one to tell you what to do, right? All I'm here is to empower you, to surround yourself with people that uplift you, that people, uh, that for people that, you know, just encourage you to be the best person that you can be uh, and to progress. I think if I can have that form of impact in your life, uh, then that's my goal. So uh, I really do appreciate your guys' time. Uh, for those that are interested in trading in the stock market, you guys can join our free group or the largest one on Facebook. Uh, it's going to be the first link down below. We have over 236,000 members within our free trading group. And if you're ready to, if you like my videos on YouTube uh, and you would like to walk, uh, watch me trade live every morning, then you guys could click that second link, learn more about the Learn Plan Profit Group. Uh, I have a video that explains exactly what's included. And if you think watching me trade live every morning um, and the overall Learn Plan Profit team would be a good fit for you, then you can decide to you know enroll if and when you feel like you're ready. So uh, I really do appreciate uh, <laughs> your guys' time. Yeah, we have Ruby uh, asking, why did you stop trading with $100,000? Uh, I made like three videos already uh, on why I did it. Uh, so feel free to, uh, or have fun uh, finding that video. Totally kidding. So I won't be mean. I, that was just uh, for, for fun. But um, I began to trade with less money because I wanted to focus more on consistency. Uh, when I began to trade with $100,000, uh, there was a time that natural gas and crude oil uh, were not working really well with me, and I became so much more obsessed about the dollar and less about the opportunity. So I took things back. I began to trade with thirty dollars to $40,000, and as you guys have seen for the past two months, I have done extremely, extremely well. Uh, I'm extremely, extremely consistent, and again, trading has now become more, again, of more of a passion and less of a job for me. So I'm so much more fulfilled now than I was back then because I was just, I would almost regret having to um, wake up every single morning. It was just, it wasn't something that I was hungry for. But now, again, I, I crave it. I crave it every morning. I like the challenge and it's something that I enjoy to do every single day. So um, truly blessed to have found what I view as my calling um, and I wish each and every single, I'm not here to tell you guys that, hey, the stock market is for you, nothing like that. You guys know that I will support you and empower you to pursue whatever market or whatever niche or whatever profession uh, you see value. All I want you guys to do is just to approach it in, with a positive mindset and to be problem solvers. Remember, people pay for problem solvers. They don't pay for problems, so don't be a problem. Uh, let's be self-sufficient. Let's, again, work hard for what we want to earn. Uh, I'm a big believer that no, no one deserves anything. Everything that you, you know, uh, work for in life, then that's not something that you deserved. It's something that you earned. Um, and I think that's a great way to approach life. So I really do appreciate you guys' time. I really hope that I earned your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you feel like I earned it. Uh, and then again, you guys can have fun. Click a couple of the links in the description and uh, see if our group is a good fit for you. I wish you guys an amazing and uh, blessed rest of your Sunday. Uh, and like always, I'd like to make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.